What is the number one thing that you can do to express yourself completely when you speak in English? It is expand your vocabulary and congratulations, that's what you're about to do. Today, you are gonna learn 10 important daily life expressions in English that I used and my husband Dan used in our conversation video about work and our jobs. And by the end of this lesson, you're going to be able to use them yourself. Hi, I'm Vanessa from speakenglishwithvanessa.com. And like always, I have created a free PDF worksheet with all of today's important vocabulary for daily life about your work and job. And at the bottom of this free worksheet, you can answer the quiz to test yourself and see if you can really use these vocabulary words in the best way possible. You can click on the link in the description to download that free PDF worksheet today. It is my gift to you. Let's get started with our first important English phrase, which is to have no say in something. To have no say in something? Hmm. Well, before I explain it to you, we're going to watch an original clip from the conversation where we used this phrase. Let's take a look at that clip and then I'll explain it to you. Let's watch. Well, my first job was a paper route, which is where you take the newspaper and you go and deliver it to your neighborhood. Now, I'm pretty sure that this was probably a job that my dad said, hey, the boys need a job. Get them a paper route. And <laughs> okay. so I had no, no say in this and I was probably, I think I was 12. Oh, okay. 12 or 13, so I was kind of young. In this clip, you saw Dan say, I had no say in choosing this job. <laughs> Can you guess what that means? Well, it means that he had no power in this choice. The choice was made by someone else. I had no say in choosing this job. I just did it. <laughs> Let's take a look at another example. When I was a kid, I had no say in what I wore because my mom always dressed me. Here you get the idea that I didn't choose my clothes, my mom chose my clothes. So we could swap out the word choose and say. We could say I had no choice about what I wore, but you want to use this advanced, wonderful phrase, right? <laughs> I had no say in what clothes I wore. All right, let's go back and watch that original clip again, and I think you'll be amazed that this time you can understand the context even more. Let's watch. Well, my first job was a paper route, which is where you take the newspaper and you go and deliver it to your neighborhood. Now, I'm pretty sure that this was probably a job that my dad said, hey, the boys need a job, get them a paper route. And <laughs> okay. so I had no, no say in this and I was probably, I think I was 12. Okay. 12 or 13, so it's kind of young. All right, let's go on to important phrase number two, which is to be paid under the table. Hmm, let's watch the original clip and then I'll explain it to you. Because you were 12 years old, this is under the age that like you typically work. So were you paid under the table or how did that work? No, I don't think we were. I don't remember the details of getting paid. Mm. Do you, I remember it was not very much. Were you motivated by money at all at that point? Like, oh, I get a job, I get some money, I can like buy some toys. <laughs> yes, yes, I was. I do remember that with that money, I bought a Nintendo 64. In this clip, I asked Dan, were you paid under the table? Does this mean that the boss actually passed the money under the table? <laughs> no, this just means that he was paid illegally. <laughs> when you pay someone under the table, it's usually because maybe they are too young to work, maybe they are an illegal immigrant and they don't have the documentation to legally pay them, or maybe it's just a job where we usually pay someone under the table. Like if you're walking someone's dog or babysitting someone's kid. Usually we don't fill out taxes for those types of jobs, even though it's technically illegal. So we could say this, when I babysat the neighbor's kids, I was paid under the table. And you know what? Even though it's illegal, 
it's pretty common and in my opinion it's not a big deal what do you think <laughs> all right let's watch the original clip so that you can have a better idea of the context to pay under the table let's watch because you were 12 years old this is under the age that like you typically work so were you paid under the table or how did that work no i don't think we were i don't remember the details of getting paid mm. do you i remember it was not very much were you motivated by money at all at that point like oh i get a job i get some money i can like buy some toys <laughs> yes yes i was i do remember that with that money i bought a nintendo 64. all right let's go to our third important english phrase which is actually two but they have a similar meaning the first one is to be on it and the next one is to be on my A game. Let's take a look at the original clip. In general, I think I would choose a workplace mm. um, just so, because I like to be really active. Mm. So like my job now, I'm teaching children, mm. elementary kids. So when I'm in a classroom, I gotta be like really moving on top of it and you know, yeah. basically on my A game. In this clip, Dan said, I need to be on it. I need to be on my A game. Can you guess what this means? Well, if you have ever been a teacher in a classroom, you know that if you are not completely prepared and completely organized, those kids will run over you. <laughs> so you need to be on it. You need to be on your A game. And this means you need to be doing your best to do it really well. Let's take a look at another sentence. I'm so proud of this project. I really brought my A game. I was on it. Here you can see that instead of saying, I was on my A game, I said I brought my A game. <laughs> and it has the same idea that I am just doing my best. I'm so proud of this project. All right, let's watch that original clip again so that you can hear these two important phrases. In general, I think I would choose a workplace mm. um, just so because I like to be really active. So mm. like my job now, I'm teaching children, mm. elementary kids. So when I'm in a classroom, I gotta be like really moving on top of it and you know, yeah. basically on my A game. Let's go on to important phrase number four, which is to be in a rut. This is a good comparison to our previous phrase, to be on it, to be in a rut. Let's watch. At home, I tend to, I don't get like that same energy. I just kind of fall into like a, mm. Mm, I don't, maybe a rut is kind of a, a too dramatic of a word, but mm. I can more easily get into a rut at home. So you feel more motivated when you're on the location. Mm. In this clip, you heard Dan say, I can get into a rut at home. If you've ever worked from home, maybe you felt like this too. You need to be around other people and out in the world. Sometimes if you're at home too much, you can get into a rut. What is a rut? A rut is kind of like a hole or a ditch. If you are in this hole, in this ditch, it's not a good place to be. So you need to figure out a way to get out of that rut. Let's take a look at another sample sentence of how you can use this related to your English learning. You might say, Vanessa's English lessons help me to get out of a rut in my English learning journey. Maybe you're feeling bored or uninspired or uninterested in English, and then you open up YouTube and you watch this English lesson and you feel energized and excited about learning English. So I hope that this lesson is helping you to get out of a rut if you were in a rut before. All right, let's watch the original clip again. At home, I tend to, I don't get like that same energy. I just kind of fall into like a, mm. Mm, I don't, maybe a rut is kind of a, a too dramatic of a word, but mm. I can more easily get into a rut at home. So you feel more motivated when you're on the location. Mm. Let's take a look at the fifth important English phrase, which is to be with it. With what? Well, let's take a look at the original clip to find out. I had to hire basically uh, baristas. Mm -hmm. And so um, the criteria I mainly looked for was, were they uh, cheerful and presentable? And did they seem with it? As in, would they be on time? Uh, can they follow 
directions and orders. And then of course you, I always ask them about their previous experience and um, usually with like the most recent job they had, I kind of asked like, why did you leave that job? In this clip we said, did they seem with it? Could they be on time and follow orders? What does it mean, did they seem with it? With who? With what? <laughs> well, when you are hiring someone, you want to make sure that they are able to think and understand quickly. So instead of saying, does the new employee have the capability of thinking and understanding quickly? Okay, that's fine, we understand. Or you can just shorten this and say, is the new employee with it? And it here is that sense of being able to think and figure out problems and they are here in the moment. They're not distracted and thinking about other things. That is not being with it. So it's possible, maybe when you were in high school, maybe you were not with it. You didn't study well, you didn't pay attention in class, you always were missing assignments, you were not with it. And then, as you got older and either went to college or got a job, you realized, oh, I need to be with it. <laughs> this is an important skill. So hopefully you have been able to grow that skill over your life. Let's take a look at the original clip that used this fun expression to be with it. I had to hire basically uh, baristas. Mm -hmm. And so um, the criteria I mainly looked for was were they uh, cheerful and presentable and did they seem with it? As in would they be on time? Uh, can they follow directions and orders? And then of course you, I always ask them about their previous experience and um, usually with like the most recent job they had, I kind of asked like, why did you leave that job? Our sixth important expression, ooh, that's a tricky word to say, sixth, sixth important expression is to be taken. Hmm, well, I could take something, but this was used to talk about Dan. Dan is taken. Did somebody steal Dan? Oh no, <laughs> they kidnapped my husband. No, that's not what we're talking about here. I want you to watch the original clip and guess, what do you think to be taken means? Let's watch. Also for that coffee shop, most of the people who worked there were women. And so I had to kind of be a little careful who, like that made actually hiring guys harder just because a lot of times if you get mm. a guy uh, who's single and giving off these signals, right? Then it just ends mm. up building this kind of like tension and drama. Mm. And so I was like, you know, the married guy there. <laughs> and like, you know, Dan's taken, it doesn't matter, you know, whatever. Yeah. Um, I gave them relationship advice and, <laughs> but yeah. you know. You just heard Dan say, Dan is the married guy. He's taken. Well, here our clue is married guy. Does this mean he is romantically available and looking for a girlfriend? Well, I hope not. <laughs> he is taken. That means his heart is taken by someone. By who? Me. <laughs> so if you are in a romantic relationship with someone, you don't have to be married, but if you're in a romantic relationship with someone, you can say, I'm taken. Oh, and this means you're not looking around for someone else, your heart belongs to someone else. It could be seen as kind of a possessive word, right? Like take, he took my heart. But really we usually use this as a very romantic phrase. I'm taken, someone has taken my heart. <laughs> it can be a very romantic thing. So in the conversation, Dan was explaining how there were a lot of women who worked at the coffee shop where he worked. And a lot of times those women would ask him for relationship advice. They had boyfriends and they wanted to know, Dan, how can you have a good relationship with Vanessa? And in fact, one time, this is so sweet, I think, <laughs> one time one of the employees brought a notebook and they said, Dan, give me your relationship advice. I'm gonna write it down. I thought this was so sweet. <laughs> so he was the one who was just there to work with them, be the boss, and maybe give some relationship advice on the side. All right, let's watch the original clip so that you can see how this phrase, to be taken, was used. Also for 
that coffee shop, most of the people who worked there were women. And so I had to kind of be a little careful who, like that made actually hiring guys harder just because a lot of times if you get a guy uh, who's single and giving off these signals, right, then it just ends up mm. building this kind of like tension and drama. Mm. And so I was like, you know, the married guy there. <laughs> and like, you know, Dan's taken, it doesn't matter, you know, whatever. Yeah. Um, I gave them relationship advice and, <laughs> but, yeah. you know. The seventh important vocabulary expression is to take for granted. This is a really important phrase that I want to make sure that you understand both in English and the meaning for your life in general. So let's watch the original clip so that you can see how it was used. Do you get the same vacations as our children because mm -hmm. you have the same schedule and all of that. So you're able to take care, you take the kids to school and yes. manage their school life, which as parents know, managing your children's school life is a big deal. <laughs> yeah, that, that's something that I kind of take for granted because, yeah, I take Theo to school with me. I don't, nobody has to drop him off or anything because he just goes with me. In this clip, you saw Dan say, taking our children to school is something that I take for granted. Do you think that Dan is grateful that he can take our children to school every day? No, he doesn't really think about it much. But when he reflects, he realizes, oh, this is something I should be grateful for. So this phrase, to take something for granted, is something that you should be grateful for, but usually you don't even think about. And there are so many things in our modern world that we just take for granted that our ancestors or other people in the world would be so grateful for. For example, free English lessons on YouTube. Can you imagine our great grandparents? If they had the opportunity to learn English for free on the internet, first they would say, what's the internet? <laughs> but also this is such an incredible tool that we just think is so normal, but it's something we should be grateful for all the time. So this is something that I try to do. I am not always successful at this, but when I realize that I am taking something for granted, maybe that is the opportunity to work from home. Maybe that is someone special in my life that I haven't thanked for a while. I try to stop for a moment and be grateful. Wow, I'm so glad that I get to work from home. My baby is napping in the other room, my kids are playing happily outside, and I can still be your English teacher. Oh, I'm so grateful for that. I don't want to take that for granted. So if there is something in your life that you are taking for granted, or someone who you are taking for granted, who is important and special and you haven't thanked them recently, this is my little life challenge for you. I challenge you to thank that person or in your mind, be grateful for the opportunity that you have that you're taking for granted. All right, let's go and watch the original clip so that you can see how this phrase was used. Do you get the same vacations as our children because mm -hmm you have the same schedule and all of that. So you're able to take care, you take the kids to school and yes. manage their school life, which as parents know, managing your children's school life is a big deal. <laughs> yeah, that, that's something that I kind of take for granted because yeah, I take Theo to school with me. I don't, nobody has to drop him off or anything because he just goes with me. The eighth important English expression that we're gonna talk about today is to seek out something. This is a great phrasal verb and I want you to see how it was used in the irregular past tense in this clip. Let's watch. We are able to do it because we have flexible jobs that we've um, sought out. Mm -hmm. We've also gone through a lot of like transitions in our life where, oh, this isn't working, this is terrible. Mm -hmm. Then you're kind of like reworking stuff and then you get into a better place. Yeah, so I do feel you like... You gotta be able to be willing to change directions like that as well. In this clip, Dan said, we sought out non-traditional jobs. Sought. Wow, sometimes English is just so weird. <laughs> the original phrasal verb is to seek out, but in the past tense, we say sought. Notice that the G and the H are completely silent. Why is there a G and an H? 
I don't know, why don't we just say seeked? Beats me. <laughs> but here we are. This is an irregular past tense verb. We sought out non-traditional jobs. And the idea of this is that we were actively looking for something. It didn't just magically happen. It didn't just fall in my lap. No, we tried to seek out non-traditional jobs so that our life could be more flexible. And I know this is something that not everyone can do. It's a real privilege to be able to seek out a specific type of job that you want to have. But this is a great phrasal verb that you can use. What is something that you're seeking out? I sought out online English lessons and here I am. I was looking for you, Vanessa. I'm so glad I found you. I'm so glad you did too. <laughs> All right, let's watch the original clips so that you can see how this was used. We are able to do it because we have flexible jobs that we've um, sought out. Mm -hmm. We've also gone through a lot of like transitions in our life where, oh, this isn't working, this is terrible. Mm -hmm. Then you're kind of like reworking stuff and then you get into a better place. Yeah, so I do feel you like- You gotta be able to be willing to change directions like that as well. The ninth important English expression is a fun one, roundabout, roundabout. We're not talking about when you're driving and you go around a circle that's called a roundabout. That is not what we're talking about here. Take a look at the original clip and see if you can guess how we used roundabout. Let's watch. If you're trying to do a million things at the same time, at the end, you're just gonna feel frustrated. At least that's how I feel. Like I got nothing done because I was trying to do everything at the same time. Um, so I'm constantly trying to simplify my life because <laughs> there's lots going on. So anyway, that's the roundabout answer for this <laughs> very tricky question. Yeah. In other words, you just got to figure it out somehow. <clears throat> yeah. It's not a one size fit all answer. In this clip, you heard us say, that's my roundabout answer for this tricky question. Do you think that we answered the question directly? No. <laughs> Instead, we went a little bit here, a little bit there, maybe wiggled a little bit in the middle. <laughs> That's my roundabout answer. So here we were just acknowledging, I know that I didn't answer the question directly, but I hope you understood in the end. <laughs> that was my roundabout answer. I'd like to give you another example with kind of a fixed phrase that we often use. Take a look at this. In a roundabout way, he was trying to ask her on a date. So maybe we can imagine he feels a little uncomfortable about asking her on a date and he doesn't wanna say, hey, would you like to go on a date with me? <laughs> so in a roundabout way, this is a fixed expression that we often use. In a roundabout way, he was trying to ask her on a date. Maybe he said, oh, my weekend is not very busy. Oh, what, what are you doing this weekend? Oh yeah, well, I was thinking about going to this restaurant. Um, what about you? Do you like fish? Do you want to go? Okay, this is very roundabout. <laughs> sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. But in a roundabout way, he was trying to ask her on a date. Not directly, in a roundabout way. All right, let's watch the original clip so that you can see how this fun expression was used. If you're trying to do a million things at the same time, at the end, you're just gonna feel frustrated. At least that's how I feel. Like I got nothing done because I was trying to do everything at the same time. Um, so I'm constantly trying to simplify my life because <laughs> there's lots going on. So anyway, that's the roundabout answer for this <laughs> very tricky question. Yeah. In other words, you just gotta figure it out somehow. <clears throat> yeah. It's not a one size fit all answer. And our 10th and final important English phrase is on the table. Well, we already talked about being paid under the table, but here, on the table. What could this mean? Let's watch the original clip to find out. For now, maybe in your life, if you're feeling really stressed by this work-life balance, lay everything out on the table. What is necessary? How can I cut back so that I feel more balanced and happy? You, I think you owe it to yourself, you owe it to your family, and yeah, you'll just be a better person for it. In this clip, you heard me say, Lay everything on the table and see what you need to do to have more work-life balance. Do I think that you should empty your pockets and your purse and put all of those items on the table? Not literally, but figuratively, you should do that. So you should put on the table 
Do I need this expensive car? Do I need to live in this neighborhood? Do I need to purchase these things? Do I need all of these various things in order to make my life the way that I want it? And maybe your answer is gonna be, you know what, I think I can sell my car and get a really cheap car. Maybe I can move to a cheaper neighborhood and be close to my parents and they can help take care of my kids instead of paying for an expensive daycare. Then I can have a better work-life balance, less expenses, and maybe work less too. Okay, here you're really deeply considering all aspects of your life. This is a pretty deep and heavy thing to do, but if you're feeling like your work-life balance is absolutely not what you want it to be, well, it's important to put everything on the table. We could say put everything on the table or lay everything on the table. So you might even use it in a workplace situation by saying something like this. I laid everything on the table when I told my boss that I wanted a raise. You really explained all the situations, all of your personal benefits, all of your accomplishments, everything that you bring to the company, all of the successes and the progress, you put everything on the table, you laid everything on the table and hoped that your boss would recognize that you're valuable and give you a raise. So here we're talking about figuratively seeing all of those accomplishments. All right, let's watch this final clip and I want you to hear how this was used in the original conversation. Let's watch. For now, maybe in your life, if you're feeling really stressed by this work-life balance, lay everything out on the table. What is necessary? How can I cut back so that I feel more balanced and happy? You, I think you owe it to yourself, you owe it to your family, and yeah, you'll just be a better person for it. Well, congratulations on learning these 10 important English phrases for daily life so that you can talk about your work and job. And now I have a question for you. Remember that fun word to be taken? Let me know in the comments. Are you taken? <laughs> Let us know in the comments. I can't wait to see what you have to say. And don't forget to download the free PDF worksheet with all of these important expressions, definitions, multiple sample sentences, and at the bottom of the worksheet, you can answer the quiz. Test yourself and see if you really learned these 10 important phrases. You can click on the link in the description to download that free PDF worksheet today. It is my gift to you. Well, thank you so much for learning English with me and I'll see you again next Friday for a new lesson here on my YouTube channel. Bye. But wait, do you want more? I recommend watching this video next. This is the full conversation lesson where Dan and I talked about our jobs, including Dan's first job where he did something not very nice. <laughs> you can find out what it is in that video and I'll see you there.